Greetings, my abundant seed family. My family from another family. How you guys doing today? Hey, I am excited to hear those of you who had that meeting from our last video, our video called See Me at the Office. See me in my office, yes. I hope you took the time to keep a meeting with yourself. I hope you looked yourself fixed in the eye and you declared what God has said about you. I truly hope eh, that you have now set up, set up an appointment on your calendar to keep regular meetings with yourself because it is extremely important for us to regularly engage with ourselves. For too long, we have abandoned ourselves. And so, when you start to do this, you would recognize that it is, in fact, self-care. So you know what? Give yourself an opportunity to grow. Give yourself an opportunity to know who you are. Now, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, and I'm, I'm not sure what we are talking about last week. I think it was last week, Tuesday, we did a video and it was called See Me In My Office. And so today, we are going to do part two of this video, See Me In My Office, because we are taking it from step to step. We understand last week that we have given up so much for others but we haven't taken the time for ourselves and today what we're gonna do is to look at four major considerations when we are dealing with what we are doing now what we call transformation and you know what those of you who are willing to stay on I would add another at the end of the video so you will get five you will get a bonus as to five considerations when we are dealing with transformation now think of the word itself transformation transport and when you think of transport you are thinking about moving from one place to another place moving from one location to another location so let's say you are moving from one state to another you mean you can either walk or you may have to take a, a taxi or you would have to drive or you'll have to take a boat and if you're going overseas, you may have to take a plane. So there are different modes of transportation, moving from one location to another. And when we think of the other part of the word, formation, think about it, formation, putting something together, taking a puzzle from scrap and building it up into something so you get the bigger picture. So we need to understand the word transformation. And so as we look at these four key steps towards transformation, think about a caterpillar. A caterpillar crawls, but it has to go through a process called metamorphosis. So he can move from crawling to flying. And so as we continue to keep our meetings from moving from one place to another, that journey towards 
success, that true journey towards recognizing that person that you are, knowing that we have been lied to in the past as to who we think that we are, it has to go through different stages. And so guess what? There will be some pain. There will be some pain when the metamorphosis is taking place because some things have to fall off. And so our four major keys uh, that we're going to look at today, plus the one I'll give you, the four major keys are forgiveness, forsaking, filtering, and fighting. But let me ask this question. How many of you have kept a meeting since the last video with yourself? All I need for you to do in the chat is just put, I did. I did. That's all I need for you to do. If you have kept a meeting with yourself so far, put in the chat, I did. But let us look into our first major key, forgiveness. Forgiveness came out of love. For God so loved the world that he gave us his son in order for us to be forgiven. So forgiveness is an essence of love. So for us to love someone else, we have to first love ourselves. Because the second major commandment that Jesus gave, gave was to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So the thing is, the things that we encountered in the past, the hurt that we would have gone through, the lies that we have been told, we have to be forgiven for the things that we would have believed. But more importantly, we have to forgive ourselves, before we could forgive others. Now, the thing about forgiveness, it is self-care. Because whatever that person would have done to you or said to you that made you feel so hurt, you are forgiving yourself so that you don't keep that wound that is supposed to be healed. Keep festering and festering and festering. You want healing from that wound. Lack of forgiveness is lack of self-care you know because there are some things in your mind that remains there that should not be there anymore forgiveness is not for the other person as i said before it is for you and if you continue to live in a place of unforgiveness it is self-sabotage so let's look at it again forgiveness is self-care Lack of forgiveness is self-sabotage. Which one do you want to do? Which one do you think is better for you? My belief is that you should forgive. Our second key is forsaking. Or you can say also forgetting. Philippians 3 13 to 14, Paul says, I press towards the mark. Remember what we are doing. We are moving in this transformation stage from one point in our life to another point. Because we are moving as we keep these meetings from glory to glory, from strength to strength to strength but transformation is a process somebody could type that in the chat for me transformation is a process and so when we move from one stage to another what we will be doing is that we are forsaking the things that are behind and pressing towards that mark we are moving towards let our eyes be fixed on our goals let our eyes be fixed on the things that god has said and purposed for us not on the past let that remain right there you are driving this car and your eyes are fixed 
in the windscreen. Every now and then, yes, you would cast your eyes in the windscreen to ensure what is behind you would not harm you anymore. And that's okay. That is okay. So we are forsaking or forgetting because we are pressing towards that path to success. We are not rehashing the past hurts. Yes, so we have dealt with forgiveness. We have dealt with forsaking. Our third key is filtering. It is so important that what comes into us, we, able, we are able to filter because we know, as it says in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 21, prove all things, but even when you prove them, hold fast to that which is good. We live in a world of negativity. It is littered with negativity. We are surrounded in negativity. We have negative friends, even in our very homes. But we have to keep in mind as we get, get into that place of transformation, we are filtering and we are choosing even the words that we use we have to start filtering life and death is in the power of the tail the tongue so the things we used to do in the past the words we used to say in the past we have to start filtering the movies the things that we used to look at we have to protect our eye gate. We have to filter things through our eye gate, through our air gate, through our mouth. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we do not want to speak anymore death over our own situation. This same self-sabotage would, some of us self-sabotage our own progress. As, as I heard Steve Harvey said recently, when we talk about no weapon formed against us shall prosper, some of us create our own weapons by the words that we speak. Water is a very good thing, but in order for us to drink it and be healthy, it has to be filtered. So it's important. And, and our fourth, our fourth key is fighting. We would recognize that this journey is not easy. It is not an easy road. But we have to fight the good fight of faith. You know for a fact that you are going somewhere. You are going in the right direction. But guess what? There will be bumps. There would be setbacks. And because you are now moving from that old paradigm, that old you, as you become the old you, the new you, you have to be able to be open and transparent with the Holy Spirit. It would mean for you and I to win this fight, we have to be in the Word of God. So we could have Holy Spirit ministering to us, reminding us of who we are. And why do we have to fight? It's work. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. Listen to this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So there is a point in your life where there is an impossibility to please God if you don't have faith. If you don't believe what God says about you, if you cannot act out what God says about you, if God said that you are the head and not the tail, if God said that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and you can live that out then you may have to start questioning we have to start questioning our faith and for those of you that have remained with us 
it means that you are finding some value from this. And if you are, I am hopeful that you would like this video. And if you are not part of the Abundant Seed community, I will be so grateful to welcome you on board with your subscription. And if you have remained, it means that you are getting some value. So it is important that you share this video with someone else. And because you have waited, it is so important. It's a privilege to give. People don't recognize it's an honor to give. You get to give because there are those who cannot give. If there is nothing to give, let's say you have two bottles and someone asks you for water but they are empty you can't give them water from the from the bottle and so it's the same way we cannot give what we do not have and so it's a privilege to give you this fifth one which is called focusing focusing we have to go back to what philippians 3 13 to 14 says that we press towards the mark we are driving towards our goal. Our eyes are fixed. Keep your eyes fixed on the Lord. Keep your eyes fixed on what the Word of God says about you. So focus is key. Remember, there are some old things that you want to do no more. Let's call them paradigms that you are moving from. Because you are moving from one level of glory to another. Think about when you are a child. Your parents had alphabet charts around the house. Or I remember when I went to preschool, Miss Hannah, who was my preschool teacher, God bless her soul. She was such an amazing individual. Everywhere in the classroom, there were boards of alphabet charts, with, even with the letters and there were animals to show you. You were able to sound out the word A for apple, apple, A, ah, B for bat, bat, B. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about. And then we had shapes, squares and triangles and rectangles. And we had colors. These things were in and around the school, the preschool. Even when you get into primary school, they were there as well. Because you want to be so focused, there is absolutely nothing wrong. As a matter of fact, I recommend that you do it. Take posters, get some cue cards and write up what God says you are. I am blessed. I am highly favored. As a matter of fact, this is what I want you to do. This is where the real bonus is. You see all the negative things that you see about yourself? Take a book, a piece of paper, draw a line straight down the middle. Write all the negative things that you feel and think about yourself. And on the opposite end, leave enough space as you write them. Write what God says you are in contradiction to what you believe. When you have done that and you have gotten it, that side that has all the negativity, tear it off. If you can burn it, burn it. And decide with all the things that God says you are, that is what I want you to stick up. And that is what I want you to declare over your life. And do it with some love. Do it with some anticipation and the fact that you can now lift your hands in freedom and declare, this is who I am. Guys, all this is part of what we are going to do in your meeting. And so next time around, on the next video, we are going to look at some C's. How we can be consistent in her and in our movement in this transformation what i want you to understand this is not about salvation this is about transformation we cannot walk towards our salvation we can walk out our trans salvation in fear and trembling but this is about being that representative that we should be because we have been lied to for so long you know what? 
Thank you guys so much for staying. Remember our five keys. Forgiveness. Forsaking. Filtering. Fighting. And the bonus one I gave you. Focusing. So what? You know what? I love you. I love you. I love you. And may God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Till we meet again. Bye-bye.